flow like water, so I'm going mainstream. Yeah. What's up Eagles Nation and welcome to another episode of Eagles Connect. This is part 2 of my draft episode and in this episode we are going to do mock drafts. As I said before, we are going to do a 3 three round mock drafts so we can look at different scenarios and routes. So let's start with my first mock draft. I'm using Pro Football Network's Mock Simulator so we can get some realistic picks. Now, obviously, I would love to grab Hamilton and Thibodeau in 15 and 18. That's just not going to happen. So I'm going to use the simulator so I can see what players are available in that range. So with the 15th pick, I already had all my guys drafted. So I decided to go cornerback. Now other than Sauce, the other two cornerbacks that I would consider in 15 is Derek Stingley and Trent McDuffie. Derek Stingley Jr., cornerback at LSU, who is at 6'1", 195 pounds, his 40 was 429. Now the first thing that jumps out at you is Stingley's speed. On top of that speed, he has it all. He has acceleration, agility, and change of direction. He is an elite lockdown corner. You can just leave him on an island with no safety help. Now, my pro comparison is two-time All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champ Stephon Gilmore, who played half of his career with Buffalo and the other half in New England. Gilmore is currently a free agent and someone that the Eagles are in contact with. Now, my third cornerback is Trent McDuffie, cornerback out of Washington. At 5'11", 195 pounds, he ran a 4'4'4". McDuffie is probably one of the cleanest cornerbacks in the draft. He doesn't have that many negatives. He may have a slower 40 time than Stingley, but his acceleration's like a Ferrari. He's also one of the best tacklers in the draft, if not the best. He's tough and physical. His elite awareness instincts and his football IQ is unbelievable. You can put him outside in the slot or even safety. He might be short, but he has a solid frame. Some people have him compared to Green Bay Packers cornerback Jair Alexander. Now, I actually have him compared to all-pro, two-time pro bowler, Tredavious White cornerback for the Buffalo Bills. Now, I had a tough time picking between the two. I like Stingley slightly better, but man, do those injuries scare me. Luckily, the board picked for me, and Stingley was already off the board, so I went with Trent McDuffie at number 15 overall. Now, if you look at the roster, we have Slay, Maddox, and McDuffie combination. This would allow the Eagles to possess one of the top trios in the league. Now, I struggle with the 18th pick, but I didn't know whether to go linebacker or wide receiver. Here's my thought process. We already have a number one wide receiver and looking for a supporting cast. And honestly, I don't know if a rookie wide receiver is going to help. I think we do need a veteran in there to help all those young receivers. So I actually decided to go linebacker for the number 18th pick. Now you have Nicobe Dean linebacker out of Georgia. At six foot two hundred and twenty five pounds, Dean ran a four five two in his forty. Being the leader of the best defense in college football speaks for itself. Dean had one of the quickest first steps and jets into the backfield like a running back. He also is one of the best linebackers in coverage. He covers a lot of field like a corner. I think Daniel Jeremiah made this comparison and now I cannot unsee it. My pro comparison is three-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champ, Jonathan Vilma, linebacker for the New Orleans Saints. Then you have the other linebacker projected to go in the first round, Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah. At 6'3", 235 pounds, Lloyd is a tall athlete with a long frame. 
Lloyd is well-rounded and just a complete linebacker. He has it all. He has speed, he's a hard hitter with physical power, and he has excellent technique. Not only is he outstanding in coverage, but he also became an amazing pass rusher. He's like a clone of all-pro pro bowler Fred Warner, linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers. So I went with Devin Lloyd. I believe that Lloyd will start at the will position. Now this would would seriously be one of the best linebacker groups with Lloyd and Riddick at the same. You don't even need to take either of them off the field. Not only did we get a linebacker, but now we also boosted up our pass rush. I love this pick. In the second round, I stayed focused on the secondary and I picked a player that I was hoping would fall to me. With the 51st pick, I chose Jalen Petrie, safety out of Baylor. Now Petrie's position is titled safety, but his real position is the star position, which is a hybrid safety type that could play outside linebacker in most 4-3 schemes. He's basically positionless. Petrie can play free safety, strong safety, nickel cornerback, or linebacker. Petrie's versatility is my favorite part of his game. He also shows a very high football IQ as he's mentally processing each play while switching positions in every down. His frame is concerning and that's why he's dropping to the second round. And he also needs to unlock his hips in man coverage. But the energy and passion he brings to the defense makes up for that plus some. My pro comparison is three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champ, Tyron Matthew, who played with the Cardinals and the Chiefs. Now Matthew is a free agent and the Eagles are interested in him. Here's the thing, if we miss out on Matthew, then Petrie makes a lot of sense. But if we sign Matthew, Petrie still makes a lot of sense. He can take over the strong safety role since Harris is in a one-year contract. Regardless, you want someone with that versatility on your 53-man roster. You have the safety of the future. He can come in for whoever is at free safety. He could come in for Harris, even Maddox if he gets injured. In the third round, I finally went offense, and with the 83rd pick, I chose Jalen Tolbert, wide receiver out of South Alabama. At 6'3", 195 pounds, ran a 449. Tolbert has dashing high end top speed. He accelerates extremely well for a taller wide receiver. With the combination of size, length, and legitimate deep threat abilities, it makes it hard for corners to defend. One of the biggest knocks on Tolbert is that he did not have much competition in South Alabama, so transitioning into the NFL will be a project. But I think with the right coaching, he can be something special. For my pro comparison, I went with Marvin Jones, who played with the Bengals and was one of Matt Stafford's best targets in Detroit. Jones is now with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I would put Tolbert in the Z position. I think if this works the way I think it would, Tolbert would be a great complement to Devontae Smith, and Hertz has a tall, fast weapon. I truly believe if Tolbert went to a better college, he would be taken in the first round. Staying in the third round at 101, I decided to go back defense and add some depth to the rotation with defensive end. I drafted Isaiah Thomas defensive end out of Oklahoma. At 6'5", 258 pounds, Thomas is a true lineman. He played both tackle and end for Oklahoma. He can win in the line of scrimmage with both a remarkable explosive first step and fast hands. Although Thomas can explode off the line, he will need to work on his balance when running around the corner and work on his bend. When I'm doing my pro comparison, I see a lot of Josh Sweat when he was coming out of college. Who was drafted in the fourth round. Like Sweat, I do think that the Eagles have the right tools and resources to make Thomas something special. So let's look at a recap of my first mock. I went Trent McDuffie giving the Eagles a reliable option opposite of Slay and the future cornerback one with 15. With the 18th pick, I hit two burns with one stone with Devin Lloyd by getting a linebacker and another pass rushing option. In the second round, I got a Swiss Army knife 
for defense with Jalen Petrie. And in the third round, I decided to stick with the Jalen theme and draft Hurts a weapon in Jalen Tolbert while adding some defensive lineman depth in Isaiah Thomas who can play defensive end and defensive tackle. So let's look at another mock I did. In this mock, Kyle Hamilton fell to number 12, and I could not forgive myself if I didn't try to trade up and get him. So in this mock, I traded with the Minnesota Vikings. I traded the 15th pick, the 83rd pick in the third round, and the 2023 fifth round in return for the 12th pick and the 2023 seventh rounder. If Kyle Hamilton falls outside of the top 10, Eagles must trade up and get him. With Hamilton on the roster, you don't have to think of the position for the next 10 years. You saw how guys like Brian Dawkins and Malcolm Drakens had a huge impact on the defense and I think Hamilton will have a similar impact. With the 18th pick, I decided to stay with the secondary and draft a corner because I really do think that's a major concern. Now my top 3 cornerbacks were already drafted so I went with my number 4 cornerback, which is Andrew Booth Jr. cornerback out of Clemson. At 6 foot 200 pounds, Booth probably has some of the best feet in the draft class. He has good agility and balance when covering his target with his quick feet. The ability to change direction within a second makes him perfect for any scheme. He also has these lengthy arms mixed with his elite ability to track the ball and you got a great corner. My pro comparison is all pro, four time pro bowler, Eagles cornerback Darius Slay. I think Booth would be a no-brainer here. The Eagles would be getting another version of big play Slay. Slay would mentor Booth and get him to his highest potential. And whenever Slay is ready to throw in the towel, the Eagles would not miss a beat. Now in the second round, I decided to look at the offensive side of the ball and select a wide receiver that possibly could go in the first round once we get to April 28th as his draft stock continues to go up. With the 51st pick, I went Christian Watkins, wide receiver out of North Dakota State. At 6'5", 211 pounds, Watson ran a 4'3'6". Watson has an unbelievable blend of speed, size, length, and athleticism that cannot be ignored. His height allows him to be a red zone threat, and he is an extremely good 50-50 ball catcher. Not only is he a great red zone target, but he is a legitimate deep threat as well. The only knock he has is he's coming from a small college and played lesser competition and I think that's why he would slip in the second round. Now call me crazy but I think he reminds me of a taller Debo Samuel. You can put the ball in his hands and you hold your breath. He has that ability to make a big play whenever he has the ball in his hands. This would be an amazing weapon for Jalen Hurts. Watson can be put in the slot or outside, but I'm going to start Watson in the slot position and move Quez into the Z position. This wide receiver class is deep, and I think you can still come out with an excellent wide receiver in the second round. Also, the Eagles are familiar with North Dakota State having drafted Carson Wentz, and is also familiar with the conference because Dallas Goddard also came out of South Dakota State. So unlike other teams, I do think that the lack of competition doesn't scare the Eagles. Final note, Watson also can serve as a returner in special teams, which we saw nothing from Rager last year. Now having traded away the 83rd pick, I only had one pick in the third round. So with the 101 pick, I decided to go linebacker and I drafted Brian Asamoa, linebacker out of Oklahoma. At 6'1", 222 pounds, Asamoa is athletic and aggressive. He excels when he is in pursuit. His sideline to sideline speed is off the charts. He runs extremely well both defending the run and winning coverage. He is explosive and a violent tackler. Now his belt is not what NFL teams are looking for in the linebacker. However, his above average length and athleticism can make teams look past his lack of height and weight. 
My pro comparison is Quan Alexander, who spent most of his career with Tampa before bouncing back and forth with the 49ers and the Saints. Asamoa will be at the well position competing and rotating with Kaiser White. I think between the two, the Eagles can finally solidify the position. So that's the end of my second mock. So just to recap, I traded up for Kyle Hamilton and drafted Andrew Booth in the first round, giving the Eagles two pillars for the future and the secondary. I got Hurts a weapon in Watson in the second round and a special teams returner. In the third round, I lost the 83rd pick due to the Hamilton trade, however got some linebacker help with Brian Asamoa at 101. And finally, I came out with a 20-23 7 round pick from that trade with Minnesota after giving up a 20-23 fifth rounder. Now let's look at my final mock. With the 15th pick, I finally had one of the defensive ends drop to me. I said before, if one of my top 5 defensive ends fall to me, I'm drafting them at 15. So with the 15th pick, I drafted Jermaine Johnson, defensive end out of Florida State. As we look at the 4-3 defense, I do believe Johnson will outbeat both Josh Sweat and Derek Barnett as starters, allowing Sweat to come in fresh in rotation. If Brandon Graham does retire at the end of the season, you still have your top defensive ends with Johnson and Sweat for next year. Now I know in my last two mocks, I said that the wide receiver class is deep and you can get a great value in day two. However, I keep going back and forth with myself. There's one part that says, you already drafted a number one receiver in Devontae Smith. You don't need to draft another number one and waste your first round pick. You could get your number two receiver in round two or three. But then there's another part that says, look at a team like the Bengals, who went T. Higgins with the 33rd pick, basically a first rounder, in 2020, and then went Jamar Chase with the 5th pick in 2021, and then they went to the Super Bowl. Especially how we struck out with wide receivers and free agency, why not go and grab a wide receiver? Now, I don't know what's the right answer here, but with the 18th pick, I went wide receiver. Now, when we're talking about the first round, we're talking about five wide receivers. Now, there is not a bona fide number one wide receiver in this class. Each wide receiver can make their case for number one. However, this is how I rank the wide receivers. With my number one wide receiver, I gave it to Garrett Wilson, wide receiver out of Ohio State. At six foot, 188 pounds, he ran a 4.38. Wilson has crazy body control and can adjust to almost anything, giving him a wide range to be able to catch the ball. His ability to stop, start, and change direction is unique and his route running is a thing of beauty. He's the best in his class when exploiting defenses in space. You can either put him in the slot or in the Z. My pro comparison is all-pro two-time pro bowler Stephon Diggs wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. Now I have a tie at number two. Tied in number two is Drake London wide receiver out of USC. At 6'5", 210 pounds, London looks like a man amongst boys, totally dominating corners. He uses his height to overtake corners, and even though he still doesn't have elite speed, he still can bully corners and make an impact as a deep threat. He's the best position receiver in the draft class, and for his size, his body control is shocking. London is a true X, but also can be a big slot. Some people have London comp to Mike Evans and Mike Williams. While I can see that, I really like the comparison of all-pro, six-time pro bowler Brandon Marshall, who played for multiple teams but really made a name for himself when playing for the Denver Broncos and Chicago Bears. Now, the second wide receiver I have tied with Drake London is Jameson Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama. At 6'2", 189 pounds, Williams 
Williams ran a 4-2-5. Williams is the fastest out of the bunch. He became the top deep threat in college football. At 6-2, you usually don't see that type of speed. His shiftiness makes the speedster not only fast but quick too. He can take the top off of defenses and is a yak specialist. Williams is a taller Deshaun Jackson where you can put him in the Z and let him fly. At number 4, I have Chris Olave, wide receiver for Ohio State. At 6'1", 189 pounds, Olave ran a 4.39. Olave wins with the combination of probably one of the best route runners plus speed. When throwing Olave the ball, he's a secure catch receiver. He has a 4.9% drop rate. Alave is a number two receiver that I think the Eagles wanted when they drafted Jalen Rager to be. My pro comparison is Calvin Ridley, wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons, who the Eagles was going to trade before he got suspended. My last receiver is Traylon Burks, wide receiver out of Arkansas. At 6'3", 225 pounds, Burks has one of the best size and speed combinations. He can be a vertical threat as well as a possession threat, where he has great hands giving him the ability to catch the ball at the catch point. I like Burks as a big slot receiver. My pro comparison is AJ Brown, wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. I truly think you cannot go wrong with any of these receivers. Each receiver brings a unique skill to the table. Now for the 18th pick, I had Garrett Wilson already taken off the board. Now, I wanted to take Jameis Williams here. It was intriguing to bring another Jeremy Macklin and Deshaun Jackson combo. However, I went with Drake London. And here's why. I think London's skills complement Devontae Smith's skills so well. You have a polished route runner who's quick with Smith, and now you have a big position receiver who has power with London. Also with Williams, after tearing his ACL, I don't know what that's going to do to his speed. And will Jalen Hurts be able to take advantage of Williams' deep threat ability? So I put London in the slot and Quiz in the Z. In the second round, I went corner, and with the 51st pick, I chose Kyle Gordon, cornerback out of Washington. At 6 foot 200 pounds, Gordon has some serious sleeping ability. He can get up and get his hands on the ball at the catch point, so he can attack at the top as well as go toe-to-toe with route runners. I think Gordon falls to the second round because he was shadowed by Trent McDuffie. Also, because of McDuffie, quarterbacks did not want to throw McDuffie's way, so he was targeted more, which made more room for error. My pro comparison is pro bowler Bron Jones, who spent five years with the Dallas Cowboys and is currently with the Miami Dolphins. Now, I'm looking at this depth chart, and I'm liking this a lot. Offense looks solid, and now defense is starting to look pretty solid as well. I think Gordon can be a really good number two corner. In the third round, I went all defense. With the 83rd pick, I went Kirby Joseph, safety out of Illinois. At 6'1", 200 pounds, Joseph can cover like a shutdown corner while playing the run in the box like a linebacker. One of his best traits is he's such a fluid mover. He is also a ball hog who has decent speed and agility. Joseph was able to get the starting job in his senior year, which he broke out. But that's why he fell to the third round, because he only really had one really good season. I think Joseph reminds me a lot of Bengals free safety Jesse Bates coming out of college. Now, Joseph is going to need to work hard to get where Bates is now, but the potential is there. So I added one of the true free safeties in the draft class. With Gordon and Joseph, I really do think this is one of the best case scenarios if the Eagles ignore the secondary in the first round. With my last pick in the third round, I went linebacker and I chose Channing Tindall, linebacker out of Georgia. At 6'2", 223 pounds, Tindall's one of the fastest linebackers in the country. Running a 4.47, he has elite speed for the position. He is also a violent tackler. He possesses some serious tackling and hidden power. Tindall, playing behind Dean and Walker, never got 
to the starting lineup, and that's why he falls to the third round. My pro comparison is Kamu Gruje Hill, who spent four seasons with the Eagles and now with the Houston Texans. I'm going to put Tyndall in the weak side linebacker position when blitzing in defense. I think he'll be an excellent rotational linebacker with White. So let's recap. I went with one of my top defensive ends in the draft in Jermaine Johnson at 15. Then went with one of the top wide receivers in the draft class and got Hurts a huge receiver in Drake London at 18. With the 51st pick, I went cornerback and drafted Kyle Gordon to help slay in the secondary. I also boosted the secondary with one of the true free safeties in the draft and got Kirby Joseph at 83. Then I added some speed in the linebacker group by picking Channing Tendall at 101. So that is my three mock drafts. Let me know what you guys think, which scenario you liked better, If you guys have any opinions of how we should go and how we should tackle the first three rounds, I would love to hear it. As always, please follow me on Instagram as well as Twitter at Eagles underscore connect to get all the updates and news around the Eagles organization. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you are notified whenever I drop a new episode. Until next time, this is George signing out.